Hello and welcome back to Firefox OS, the platform HTML5 deserves. I'm here with Michael Coates. So guess what we're going to talk about today? Firefox OS and security. So why do we need to think about security when we're talking about an HTML5 platform? Well, Firefox OS uh, is built with a multi-tiered architecture for security. And as we're moving into mobile, it's important for uh, us to pay a lot of attention to security. I mean, just like on the desktop, we're trusted with a lot of user data, but moving to mobile, even more data, even more information about users. And we want to make sure that users uh, using Firefox OS have a very secure environment. So apps that are developed need to keep security in mind as well. One of the nice things we brought to Firefox OS is a new way of looking at the, um, the permission model. And uh, app developers, I think, will really enjoy this, and so will users. Uh, when an app wants to access a particular permission uh, on the phone, the user has a clear understanding of what this is, and they decide when the app is running whether or not they want to grant this permission. And this creates a nice setup that protects user data and also enables app developers to quickly access the information they need in order to make effective and secure applications. So that works against the problem that we have on other platforms where the app asks for permissions for everything up front. You got this massive list and you just say yes, 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 just because you want to play the game. So you could ask on demand later on when the app is running to say a month later, can I access the camera now? Exactly. And the, and the reason this is important is it lets the user understand what's going on. Um, when you install an app, you really do just want to play the game. And if it asks for a bunch of permissions, the user probably will just say yes, which is not a good situation to protect user data. Um, instead, when the application later wants to access the camera to take a picture, the user could say, oh, that makes sense. Sure, I'll do that. Or another good example is I'm looking for restaurants in the area, and the app asks to use your GPS. That makes perfect sense. So yeah, let's go ahead and say yes to that. But if you're playing a video game and you're going to the next level and the app says, I'd like to access your contacts, the user is going to say, something's fishy here. That doesn't make any sense. I'm going to say no. So it creates a nice situation where developers get everything they need to make secure applications easily. But users still are in control in this model, so they can easily detect if something's a little fishy and um, potentially accessing data it shouldn't, and they can quickly stop that. So as a developer, I get a feedback loop. So it's just an event that says, like, yes or no, the user allowed or disallowed it. Exactly. The apps are designed in mind so that uh, they need to be accommodating for a yes or no response. So the application can gracefully handle, yes, the users decided to do this, or maybe no, at this time they haven't because they either decided they didn't want to do that or they weren't sure. Um, but either way, the application will be ready to handle that. So how is the security model of Firefox OS different to other platforms? Like what other challenges are there for us as the provider of the operating system and for app developers? Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest differences is that we build the security model on the web. The technologies of the web drive Firefox OS, and we do the same thing with the security model. And what this means is, by default, apps are untrusted. So just like going to a website doesn't necessarily grant access to your contact book on, any, um, on, your, on your browser, the same thing with Firefox OS. So when you're using apps, you can be assured that, by default, they don't have extra privileges that they might not need. Now, when apps want to be built that take advantage of some of the more powerful APIs, um, what they can do is go through a marketplace review to make sure that's happening, happening safely. So the marketplace review, that's, uh, that is one of the things that is, that, that, that is a, a bit of a thorn on the side for developers because you want to get your stuff out, you want to get mm -hmm. the updates mm -hmm. out quickly. How good are we or, or uh, what kind of timing can, you, can mm -hmm. you tell people what we're doing here and how do we actually uh, review these apps? Mm -hmm. Do we do like penetration testing on them or mm -hmm. what's happening mm -hmm. there? Yeah, the nice thing about that setup is if you're not using extra permissions that access sensitive user data, you actually don't go through that, that rigorous review. It's actually very quick because the security model itself says, you know, you're untrusted, so we can just push you through real quickly. So that we'll see a lot of benefits there where developers can get their apps quickly out to users, you know, almost instantly. For apps that do need review, we use a multiple, um, multiple approaches, you know, from automatic testing, from human analysis, looking for... You know, potentially dangerous uh, calls that we want to make sure are used safely. Um, and all of that's going to be pulled together, um, also leveraging the work we did with uh, add-ons. We've been doing reviews for apps and add-ons for many, many years. Um, so we can get uh, apps out very quickly. I I've heard five to ten days, maybe two weeks. Um, the goal is to make it very quick because we realize that's a challenging area and we want to make sure developers can get their apps out. Yeah, and in the end, it's the security and the identity of our end users. We don't want to play games with that, and we don't want to rush things. Um, 
in terms of security models and UX, that was always been of a pain in, on the desktop. Like, I mean, operating systems that ask you every single time you move your mouse if you really wanted to do that <laughs> is something people don't want. Exactly. So do we have a unified UI for that in Firefox OS? And uh, what does that look like? So we don't want to overwhelm our end users, but at the same time, we want to make it very obvious that they're granting permission to something that they might not want to give permission to. Exactly. This, this really gets back to the, uh, the app permission model. And when, for instance, you ask to access a contacts book within an app, the user has the option to say, allow, always allow, um, never allow. So what they're doing is either grant you at a point in time and ask every time, or they can say, you know, I'm really confident in this. Let's just remember this setting so you don't keep asking me those questions. Because what you're getting to is very true. We don't want to have users go into a, a fatigue mode where they are, again, just clicking because they want boxes to go away, they want things to run. Instead, we want to make the model so they're very much informed, but then have control over how often they're prompted. Making the operating system secure is one thing, but getting the operating system up to date with the OEMs and the phone providers later on is the other issue. So what is our model there? Like, uh, Can we ensure that there will not be outdated Firefox OS out there? Do we force updates onto people? Yeah, the, the mobile updating paradigm is a complex issue for many mobile devices. And it's one that we definitely put a lot of thought into as we're building Firefox OS. And what we're doing is working with um, OEMs, working with carriers, to really commit to a quarterly patch cycle. Because we need to get security updates out to users. Um, you know, we have a rigorous security life cycle. We proactively find many different issues. We have them reported through a bug bounty program. But the key then is to make sure users are safe. So by pushing them out every quarter, we're proactively making sure they're protected against issues. In the event something happens faster than that, we know we need to go into a rush. We need to work with our, our partners and push things out very quickly. And that'll be an urgent security patch. And when those things happen, you know, we'll scramble to make sure they get to users as fast as possible. Is there a mechanism to actually flag a an app as malicious? Yeah, that, that's another good feedback loop. Um, for users working with the marketplace, um, installing apps, if they see something that's suspicious, they can then flag that, you know, this looks funny, and uh, we'll, we'll do some additional analysis to see what's going on. Uh, it, Again, leveraging the community is a really powerful way to help keep everyone safe. Because that's a big thing you always hear about open place, open marketplace. It's the same as Android, that people keep talking about rogue apps that look like it's just a, a picture app, but actually gets your data in the background. So we want to make sure that people can report these things rather simply, and we want to make sure that malware doesn't spread through our marketplace. So all in all, there's lots of measures in Firefox OS to keep the uh, to keep our end users secure and actually keep uh, rogue apps from coming into our marketplace as well. There's a security model in place. There's a review process in place. Do you think that all of that could help the web in general to be more secure as well? Because on desktop, we have a lot of security issues because we don't have sandboxing. We don't have apps that are basically packaged in themselves. Have we had some learnings that we can move onto the desktop that came out of Firefox OS? Yeah, I think the fact that we build Firefox OS on the web really lets us leverage several different security benefits. I mean, working on the web for the last you know, 10 plus years, we've learned tons for Firefox security. And those lessons learned transfer to Firefox OS and what we're building there. And at the same time, as we're building more advanced technologies in Firefox OS to take to combat today's threats, we can then also transfer those back into Firefox to help everyone win. So I think the fact, again, that we're working on the web, everyone wins. And that's a good point to end up on. So thanks very much and take a look at the security model of Firefox OS and start building apps and keep your users secure. Thank you.